Welcome to this presentation titled Educational Blogs, Critiques, and Analysis. My name is Matthew Salyards, and I'm presenting today on behalf of the School of Education at Liberty University in accordance with classroom assignment for EDUC 639, Trends and Issues in Technology. This course is taught by Dr. Daniel Bayer. There are so many ed educational technology blogs online that it can be challenging to read through the noise and find those that truly have something new, creative, or simply informative to offer. Adding to the difficulty of finding read-worthy sites, many blogs purport to be focused on educational technology, but actually spread their content over a wide variety of educational topics. Good educational technology blogs accomplish one of three things at a minimum. First, a good blog post can help readers consider the future direction of education technology and the impact it will have on students. Second, they can inform readers of new technologies and creative innovations for use in the classroom. Last, they can provide brief but practical training overviews on using technology for educational purposes. Using these criteria as a foundation for evaluation, this presentation briefly analyzes and critiques three specific educational technology blogs. In a 2019 blog for Education Week, Klein's discussion of personalized learning provides an excellent example of a blog that considers a specific aspect of the future direction of educational technology. Klein analyzes survey data from approximately 600 teachers to determine the challenges and benefits associated with developing and delivering curriculum that allows students to set their own learning goals, determine how they want to be graded, and to select the types of projects they want to undertake to prove mastery of learning topics. Klein also points out that limited professional development training, the time required for customized curriculum development, and the immaturity of students, among other factors, can all contribute to negative experiences with personalized learning. Ultimately, Klein's blog is a highly effective demonstration of how a well-researched blog can challenge educators to consider the future direction of educational technology. Often, blog sites represent creative innovations on educational technology in the form of new technology platforms or software applications. However, Oler presents creative innovation in the form of recommended strategies for developing digital citizenship in students. Oler points out that depersonalizing conversations help students become more comfortable, subsequently allowing them to feel more at ease when discussing their online relationships, considering the responsibilities of digital awareness and online engagement, and discussing positive ways to use technology. Oler's blog is effective in offering a creative approach to helping students understand the overall benefits and hazards of digital and online activities. Given the ongoing pandemic situation in the United States and the uncertainty concerning a return to the classroom for the 2020-2021 school year, Wolpert Gowron 2020 video blog on keeping students engaged in a digital learning environment provides an excellent example of a blog that provides practical value for educators. Wolper Galron points out the need to continue teaching responsibly and differentiate instruction for online learning, in addition to providing six specific tips on how teachers can potentially increase student engagement. For instance, in her tip for keeping it simple and engaging, Wolper Galron suggests that teachers create their own digital content, including videos and presentations. In another tip, Make Your Space Clean and Comfy, Wolpert Galron discusses the importance of virtual organization and suggests creating chat rooms for side discussions and group work. 
where students can engage one another as well as with the teacher. Blogs like Wolpert Galron's are effective because they provide practical technology-based solutions to classroom challenges. Each of these blogs represents one of three stated goals for educational technology blogs. In doing so, they manage to create a sense of interest, trust, and authority that allows readers and viewers to focus on how their recommendations and practices might be applicable to the teacher's classroom settings. It's important to note, too, that these blogs are effective because they are highly focused on advancing student ability using educational technology, or, as in the case of Oler's Digital Citizenship Blog, educational technology-driven classroom approaches. Please make sure to check out the references and to visit the blog sites. Thank you very much for your time and participation in this presentation.